Okay, so this is part A of the Le Chatelier's Principle, this demonstration from the Le Chatelier's Principle Lab. So in part A, it wants us to play around with the copper um, complexation equilibrium. So I'm gonna start out with copper sulfate. Copper sulfate's this pale blue. And when we look at copper sulfate in water, you can't neglect the fact that the water actually does complex. It's a good ligand for the water. So copper has a coordination number of six and makes an octahedral geometry. So this is, we think copper ion, but it's really a copper hydrate complex. So we're gonna add a little bit of ammonia. Now your lab procedure talks about the concentration of ammonia being one molar, but I have a confession to make. We are here making this video and our ammonium solution went bad. Um, ammonia decomposes into, ammonium hydroxide decomposes into ammonia plus water very readily. So it's very difficult to control the concentration of it. So this is more, this is, it says six molar on the bottle, but I honestly don't know what the concentration is. So as I add this ammonia to the solution, you can see two different colors of blue forming here. So copper hydroxide is an insoluble compound. This color here, this is the hydroxide. It's binding that copper ions or making copper hydroxide. That is insoluble. So that's the first thing that happens is as I add it drop by drop, I am binding all the copper into the form of copper hydroxide. Now I'm gonna continue adding ammonia. And if I add an excess of ammonia, you can see the different colors that I'm forming here. I've got the copper hydroxide on the bottom. And this is uh, ammonia that's now in large enough quantities that it's displacing the water in the, as ligand in the complex ion. So let's just do that so you can see the gradation there. On the top we have the ammonia is acting as the ligand and in the middle, that is the copper hydroxide precipitate. And at the bottom, there's still a little bit of copper ion with just water as the, as the ligand. So I'm gonna go ahead and let's just really push this all the way. We're just gonna add a bunch of ammonia and really send it all the way to the right. Get that all mixed up in there. There we go. So it's a nice cobalt color. So let's talk about what that chemistry is here. So as I add the ammonia, four of the waters, eventually if I add enough, four of the waters will be displaced with ammonias. Working the covalent bond there. Oops, the axial positions are going to stay as water. Those axial positions are extra sticky with those water. So this is that deep cobalt blue. And we pushed, this is a, so here is my complex ion. I still have two waters and I have four of the ammonia groups. Still a plus two charge. Okay, so Le Chatelier's principle, I already played with it a little bit to push it all the way to the right. Le Chatelier's principle says if I add extra ammonia, we're going to push the equilibrium to the right. But if I want to bring it back again, how could I bring it back? I can bring it back by removing the NH3. So the way that I'm going to remove the NH3 is I'm going to add some hydrochloric acid. That's a base and that's an acid. So the acid will remove the NH3. So as the NH3 is removed, we can bring the equilibrium back. So let's do that. And again, the lab um, is written as if these concentrations are the same. And if they truly were the same, we would expect that the amount of ammonia I added, I would have to equal that with the amount of acid at the back. But my concentrations are off, so I'm just going to shove it back the other way. So as I add my HCl, oh, I might have to add a lot more. Okay, let me get the secondary test tube here. Hang on two seconds. Test tube. Okay. Let me 
Pierce Young. You can see it going backwards. Oh, I think I totally blew past the hydroxide. It's there just a little bit. Oh, there we go. There's the hydroxide. And if I keep going, let's see if that's enough. back to my original my original copper complex with just water <laughs>